Well, it looks like it's you and me, Alex, for this morning. Although we'll, uh, I'm sure, have everybody watching sometime today. Uh, I'm going to do a little uh, preparation work here, but I want to record it because part of what we're doing today, and let me jump over here and get us to where we need to be. What we are doing today is we are going to be looking at RSS and how it can be leveraged to be a part of your professional learning network. Yesterday we did Twitter. Uh, Twitter is one of those programs that's very simple and easy to use, but extremely powerful. Um, and as I demonstrated yesterday with Twitter, if you already have a Twitter account, it gets to be a little more difficult than if you just start from fresh and have a clean account, especially when you go to put it into your wiki because the profile just goes straight in. And then uh, I think I didn't make this very clear yesterday. Whatever you add to your Twitter account will show up uh, in the widget that is in your wiki now. So that is uh, a nice feature. So once again, you have a sort of a one-stop place for people to go to see what you are curating and what you have found that is relevant to your PLC. Now today, we'll be looking at something called an RSS. And what I did here is we're going to explain the history of RSS in just a minute. But to find RSS feeds is not as easy, frankly, as it used to be. And so what I've done is I've put in directions on how to find the RSS feed of a site for the various browsers. Here's Internet Explorers. Here's Safaris. Uh, here's Firefoxes. And I went ahead and I put in another one just because I felt like we weren't really getting it all done. So we've got, you've got a couple of uh, helpful uploads here that will show you how to find where the feed might be located. And that's going to be the challenge, frankly, of the day. So what I've tried to do is I've tried to give you some very specific specific places you can go and look to um, find information that you can get the RSS feed out of. And I'm showing those to you right now. And they're all right here in this particular module. Okay. Let me go back to the assignment, make sure we all understand what we're doing today. It's very straightforward. We are going to locate just five, five RSS feeds. That's all you need to do. 
Um, and then I'm asking you to write a paragraph explaining the reason you chose the people you listen to and how they fit into your PLN. Do that on the same page. And then, of course, responding to the six to uh, the two to four paragraphs, one paragraph will do it really, frankly, six to eight well-written sentences about the various articles that are here. Again, these are very short, very succinct articles. Uh, the other thing that I have in here that we're not going to do uh, in the past when I've had much larger classes, we've done this one. And then it's taking a look at this whole phenomenon called podcasting. I'll talk about it, but if you are interested in how this all works, I thought you'd like to see that you can build a podcast very simply. And here's a video that shows you how to do it. Here is the podcasting software that I use. It's called Soundation. Uh, here's the link to it. If you want to get in and play in Soundation, you can use my username, sbswan02 at louisville.edu with the password lowercase ulit241. Um, you're more than welcome to go in and play around in here. Soundation is nothing more than Audacity, which is a program you have to download and install on your computer. It's Audacity on the web. Uh, depending upon your network connection, it runs very, very smoothly, or it can be a little choppy. That's the only drawback to it being on the web. And then we also have included in here for you how to go and find various sound effects and music to put into your podcast. Finally, if you're really, really serious about wanting to do this, um, I have a paid Podomatic site. Podomatic is a uh, podcast hosting site. Uh, most podcast hosting sites are fairly expensive. A lot of folks use Podbean. Um, Lipsy is another one. Um, Libsy, I'm sorry, not Lipsy. Libsy. And Podomatic, I find, is extremely simple to use. Uh, it also... Go, it also go, uh, goes ahead and puts in the links, the hooks, into iTunes so that your podcast can be found in iTunes um, and other podcasting apps. Tuned In is another one. Um, I'm not sure if Podomatic sites can be found inside Spotify. You know, Spotify now uh, curates uh, podcasts. I'm not sure if it, if it does that. I know it does in Tuned In. So, you know, this is for your edification and knowledge. If you want to give this a swing, I have been doing podcasting now for close to 20 years, and I find it to be a very fascinating medium. Uh, I kind of, um, well, I'm going to explain all that to you here in just a minute. So what I need to do to make my Chrome browser that I'm on work with what we're going to do today, and I'm going to show you this, although I don't expect you, if you're on Chrome right now, and gosh, I hope you are, um, if you will follow along and do this step, you can make your Chrome browser very, very easy to use with um, finding all of these RSS feeds. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go and get uh, a little extension for our Chrome browser. And the way you do it is just go RSS for Chrome. In other words, just do a search for RSS for Chrome. It'll pop up RSS feed reader Chrome web store. You basically just click on it and you tell it to add it to Chrome. That's all there is to it. Now, if you look up here, and I'll scoot this over a little bit, you know, I've already have it installed. See the little icon here? It looks like a little box with radio waves coming out of it. That is the standard uh, look for a 
RSS feed. Now, in the old days, Internet Explorer had this built in, had this built in to its browser. And you would just see it up here in the top, up here in the, the menu bar. I don't think that's the case anymore. And when we look at where Firefox has it, Firefox makes you jump through a lot of hoops. Here's Explorer. And as you can see, Explorer had it right up here. Little, same little icon. I'm not sure where it is now. Safari, for those of you who are Mac users, um, it's right there. It's, it's also built in to the Safari page. And, oh, they're saying in Firefox, it'll appear in the address bar as well. Okay. I'm going to show you how to work it here in just a minute. So sit back, relax, put your feet up, get your cup of coffee, and let Uncle Steve tell you a story. Where did this all start from? Well, let me give you a sense of what it used to look like. This is an RSS document. In the very early days of this class, about 10 years ago, I used to have to sit here and teach you how to write this document. Now, as you can see, it uses something called XML. And it's right up here. It starts off at the beginning. It says XML version 1.2. And then it starts down here with these various, these things that you see here that have these carrots in front of them, the little bracket looking things. This is classic HTML coding, basically telling whatever comes next what it is. And so you can see that this says title, and then here's what the title is, and then you have to close it. So this is classic writing in HTML. Now, as you can see down here, here's where it gets different and why it's called XML as opposed to HTML. As you can see, these tags allow you to have things in them that are actual objects instead of just um, descriptions. So you can see that the next tag down, and it's in the carrots, it says link. And then here's a link. This means that when you ran this, when you put this into a site, it would understand that the, if you were to click on it, the code then said, take them to this site right here. Again, we jump down here, and here's another title link. Does nothing, just tells you the title. And again, here's another link that takes me to where this little web program would run. Now, it's a very simple document. But the whole point of it was that it shows and it points where you're supposed to go to find the information. So here's the story of RSS. As I said, it's a very fascinating story. So there was a young man, um, a genius, a true genius. At the age of 15, David Weiner uh, was enrolled in MIT, Massachusetts Institute for Technology. He basically skipped most of high school. He was that brilliant. Why was he that brilliant? Well, he was the one of the he was the very first person who took a look at the web as it existed back then, and it was a very very sterile place. Uh, lots of text, as I told you yesterday, um, when we started being able to come up with the code, and you realize all this was dependent upon the code, the HTML code, 
When we came up with the HTML code to be able to put pictures onto web pages, everybody went nuts. And Adobe, at the time, uh, was the first company to come up with a web development tool called PageMaker. And theirs became the default. And then along came a browser company by the name of Netscape, who had a browser called Netscape Communicator. Well, actually, it was called Netscape Navigator at first. And they, the, the beauty of, of that uh, little browser was you could actually code within it. So as you can see, it was all very much open the hood, get up underneath it and play with the engine. Uh, and you were required to understand how to write code to be able to do all this stuff. Of course, none of that exists today because it's all hidden from you. So Dave Weiner, this brilliant young man, was trying to make the web more responsive to its users. So he was looking around, trying to figure out ways within the HTML code boundaries to do that. That's when he started playing around with something called XML. Now, as we just saw, XML understands things. So what is a thing? Well, you can have it look for words. Uh, I, I wrote an XML file for our computer test that we had in Jefferson County. Because one of the problems we had with the computer test was we had performance events. Remember performance events? We had performance events and the kids were asked to create things. Well, you can't grade that like you could a multiple choice where it's like, look for A. If they choose A, they get a point. They don't choose A, they get a zero. You know, very, very binary. You get it right or you get it wrong. We were wanting them to create things. Also, uh, short answers. Again, that's very hard to automate because you're looking for, do they have the right words? Do they have the right use of the words? XML allows you to go in and say, look for the following things. And then I made up a, a rubric that basically in XML that would go in and say, I'm looking for the following words. Boom, 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 boom. The assumption was that if those words appeared and if they appeared in the correct formation, the correct pattern, then the answer was correct. Now you, are probably sitting out there right now going, well, Steve, um, people write sentences in different ways and you're very correct. So the challenge was, was to sit there and try to figure out how many different ways could you write an answer to the question? And we put all that into XML. So XML can do that, but where its real power is, like we saw in that example, was it understands what things like links mean and it understands things like um, websites. It understands those kinds. Oh, and it understands um, file types. So having been able to do that, he was able to create a way for people to have true interaction on the web. Now, not only was that revolutionary, but then Weiner took it another step and built in to the XML a subscription tag. So you would point to a website, which in turn was running off of a server somewhere, a computer somewhere. And on that computer, you were storing the files that had to do with whatever your XML was about. Dave Weiner created that. Now, 
the first iteration we saw of that was something called a news ticker. And you've seen this. Um, I remember when Apple computers, Macs, first went mainstream, where it's got cheap enough that people could afford to buy them. One of the cool things, quote unquote, that it had on it was the ability to run a news ticker across the bottom of your screen or a stock market ticker. I was very amused on Monday when I was watching the WWDC, the World Wide Web, or the World Wide Developers Conference that Apple puts on every year about this time. And they were touting this extraordinary new ability of the Mac OS to have the ability to run a news feed. And I just sat there and laughed to myself thinking, yeah, we were doing that back in the day before there was even a OS 10, it was pretty standard in uh, OS 8 and OS 9. So the ability to do that was we were able to see events happening in real time. David Weiner. So while I was in MIT, David Weiner had a very passionate belief that information should be free and readily available. Think about what he created. He created a way for you to say, I would like to know everything that you have created that has to do with this topic. And I'm going to subscribe by linking to this website that you create that is connected to a computer that is holding the documents, the files that you have uploaded. He was so passionate about this in his belief that he built a server <clears throat> and he started uploading the files, the documents that the various professors at MIT were creating about whatever their field of study might be. Now, his downfall, the mistake he made, of course, was he did all this without anybody knowing. That was, his, that was how strong his passion was. Now, you can probably guess that a kid of 15, 16 years old was not really sophisticated enough to really understand the bigger world around him. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. And so Dave, David Weiner, had a very difficult time with understanding why all of these people were so upset with him and his new discovery. Where he ran afoul was he started uploading content that was related to the military industrial complex that MIT was and is still very much an important part of. And so, quote unquote, vital secrets, national secrets, were being put out there onto the web. So the federal government went after David Weiner. How old was this guy? And it, for years, prosecuted and persecuted him. Now, there was a group of people who came to his defense, which grew into the Freedom Foundation, which is a nonprofit profit group that really strives to keep the Internet what it originally was supposed to be, a free, open highway of interchange and exchange of information. When you hear people in the news talking about the FCC wants to take away the ability of the web to just be free and open to everybody and to allow it to be metered like your water and your electricity. Goes back to the beginnings here of Dave Weiner. The sad part of the story is 
Dave Weiner, who is a very fragile human being. And it's interesting. There are these kind of stories all woven into technology development. Um, sort of um, the myth or the stereotype of the person who sits alone in the, in the room with the door closed and the lights turned down low in front of a computer, uh, coding away in the dark, eating Doritos or Cheetos and drinking lots of Mountain Dew to stay awake. Well, in Dave Winder's case, that was true. And this fragile kid finally couldn't take it anymore, and he committed suicide. And so one of the geniuses, one of the great geniuses of the early Internet and web was lost to us. And who knows what he would have gone on to create? Well, I know probably what he would have gone on to create, something that we now call HTML5. And by the way, that is HTML5. What you're sitting on right now, um, sorry for throwing you into the scary room, but this is HTML5, the ability of an application that is very, very heavy into graphics and very, very heavy into multimedia, being able to run through your browser, HTML5. In the past, we always had to rely upon outside apps. And in our particular case, in my particular case, when I would use the old version of Collaborate, I had to rely upon a little Java app that you had to download to your desktop to then be able to launch the Collaborate outside of your browser and connect to our class. With HTML5, you don't have to do that. It's all comes straight through your browser. Simple as that. Dave Weiner is the one who set that ball rolling. So what does this have to do with what we're doing today? Well, just about everything now that is on the web has an RSS feed attached to it. This blackboard space that we're in, as you can probably see, I went over and just clicked on my little, does not have an RSS feed. Since blackboard can't figure out why it should do that, I think it's rather stupid because what it would do then is every time something came up, it would automatically let you know. There's the University of Louisville. This is the front page of the University of Louisville, the home page. It has an RSS feed. I could go on and on and on here showing you things with RSS feeds. But what I want you to realize is it's everywhere. Your wiki, your PBWorks wiki that you have created is an RSS feed. So let's go look at that real fast. So I'm going to drop into my PBWorks. And here's my front page. There you go. So as you can see, my PB works is now a full blown RSS. Now, what does this mean? Put it very simply, as you can see over here, what will happen is if someone were to subscribe to my home page or to my wiki, Every time I put something new into it, it's going to alert me. That was the genius. That was the genius of what Dave Weiner's code would do. So every time I add new content to this thing, the people who have subscribed to my wiki will get a message that says, hey, there's new content at Swan PLN. Go take a look. What we're going to do 
is I'm going to need you to create. I heard a boom. Did someone just join us from the great beyond? Oh, Kim's here. Christina's here. I hope you all were here for that uh, very touching story that I just told. Alex, wasn't that a great story? <laughs> it's one of the best stories that I can tell. I'm sorry about your computer dying. Kim, you should let me know these kinds of things. I can help. Um, so how are we going to do this? We're going to go in. We're going to do PB Works. We're going to create a new page. We're going to call that new page Module 3 RSS. I love how it uh, blinks at me when you all are saying things. Christina, that's it. Um, one of the things that I find so interesting is, you know, nothing's new. Well, RSS was new. But yes, the bell that you see next to a YouTube channel, when you subscribe to it and you get the notifications, that's using RSS. Same idea. So it's everywhere. Now, Here's my page, Module 3 RSS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go looking for RSS feeds. And I'm going to show you how to do it here in just a minute. And because this is not a, what, what's the word I want to use? This is not an exact science. Like yesterday when we were in Twitter, because what we did in Twitter is we went and found resources. We built a list. We built our favorites, et cetera. We just built stuff into the profile. We then built the widget, and we took the widget and put it in here. There is a different way you have to do it in the PV Works. It's not hard. Trust me, it's not hard. And we're going to go find five of those. And the explanation that I'm looking for in a paragraph on this page would be, why would you pick the five that you picked? So how do we do this? It's super essential. So I'm going to scroll down here to this area where Steve's got all these various places you can go. Now, blogs can be RSS. Websites can be RSS, just like you saw with the University of Lowell. Wikis can be RSS, just like you saw with your wiki. So I've got here blogs, we've got podcasts, um, and I've tried to give you some, I thought were fairly interesting ones. I'm going to show this one off right real fast. We'll use this as an example. Free technology for teachers. This is a website run by a guy by the name of Richard Byrne. Actually, I've met this guy. He's pretty cool. Um, he is in a, um, he was a, um, my old job that I had in Jefferson County Public Schools, he has in a school district or a, I think in Vermont, I think, I should know this and I apologize. Um, but as you can see, he has quite a wonderful site here where he will tell you all about new things, but he will give you Lots and lots of resources. Lots of resources. The only thing bad about his site is it's heavily advertised on. You know, I can live with that. Now, I showed you how I went and added the Chrome extension. It gives me my little RSS feed up here. So when I click on it, as you can see, it gives me three choices here. It says I can have a feed that's an Atom feed. I can have a feed. Well, I have two Atom feeds here. Now, what's Atom? So, Atom was an attempt to put in the ability to have video and audio mixed in with the feed. 
with the introduction of HTML5, that all has kind of become superfluous. So you really don't need it. So when you do the RSS, what you're doing is, is you're, you're getting just a, a very clean interface. So I'm going to go right click on that. And I'm going to copy the link address. Now, here's the problem. And it's a problem with browsers. In the old days, if this were an RSS feed up here in the link in the URL, you would see it there. It would have something like www.freeforwardteachers.com slash RSS. For some reason, the browsers decided, browser manufacturers decided that was too confusing. I, don't, I really don't know. And so they quit doing it. It's a shame. But as you saw, I just went up here and clicked on that, found the, the link that I wanted, RSS, right click, copy the link address, and then I'm gonna come over here to my PP Works page. I'm gonna to go to edit. I'm gonna go over to our friends insert, but this time I'm gonna skip past the HTML Java one. I'm, uh, yeah, the HTML Java one. And I'm gonna go down to HTML and gadgets, and I'm going to drop all the way down to RSS feed. I'll let that sit for a second so you can kind of take it all in. Plus, I'm going to pour myself some more tea. So, as you can see, it's a little bit further into the wiki space than what we're used to doing, but it's still fairly straightforward. You're going to insert. All the way to the bottom to more plugins, down to the second one from that HTML and gadgets, and then all the way in to RSS feed. Select RSS feed and paste in that link you just found. Here you can decide how many of the episodes or post, or in Richard's case, I guess they're post. Um, links, in other words, the information that's on the page, how many of those do you want to see at one time? Ten's a nice, easy number. If you want five, that's fine. There's nothing in the assignment that says how many of these items you have to show, just five RSS feeds. So I'll go ahead and do five. Make sure that you show the feed title so we'll know what we're looking at. And make sure that the open links in a new window. I heard the boop. Was someone asking something? Christina, are you in Chrome? Are you using Chrome? Because I'll show it again. Firefox. All right. Let me get this finished and I'll come back and I'll show you how to do it in Firefox. So I put the link in here and I'm going to say next. And if this pops up, all is good. If it pops up and it says loading, that means that it's not a true RSS feed and you're not going to get anything. I'll insert the plugin. And then when I save it, boom, there it is. Okay. So from his RSS enabled page, I now can see all the different things that he has that he wants me to be aware of. And I can click on them and it takes me to their location within the page. Simple as that. Now, let's get to Christina's question. He's using Blogspot, by the way. Can you see the B up here? So let's jump into Firefox. And if I blow up here <clears throat> and you can't see this browser, somebody just boot me and let me know. That's my new term for when you all send me a 
up a uh, chat uh, message. I'm going to start calling them the boops because I don't see them until I pop back over into that window. So I'm going to go into Firefox and go into uh, the Blackboard so that I can see, oh, my Firefox is out of date. Update. No, thank you. I am a Chrome user for a very simple reason, Christina. When I travel to different computers and I use a Chrome browser that isn't the one that is on my machine, everything that I've done on my Chrome browser on my home machine follows me. That's why I use Chrome. And there's no reason why you can't have Chrome on your JCPS uh, computer that I'm aware of. So I'm going to jump in here and go to the modules. And I'm going to go to our module number three. And let's go to who I listen to. And let's scroll down here and find Richard again. And here he is. Now, the question is, supposedly in Firefox, it shows the RSS feed up here. And I would then click on it, and it would give me um, There we go. Now, I'm going to slow down here because this gets very convoluted. So if you guys who are out there who are on Chrome browsers, you kind of have seen how it works. I'm going to show you how to do it in Firefox. So as you can see, when I come down here to bookmarks, I see a thing that says subscribe to this page. And again, what it's saying to me is, hey, there's an RSS feed here. And I can come down to the RSS feed. And I can basically subscribe to it. And here's his, all his episodes. And this is where, to me, it gets very kind of convoluted. At this point, I should be able to take that browser address and put it into my PB Works, and it should work. So let's go give it a try. So I'm up here, and I'm in Edit, and put a space down. I'm going to go over here to our Insert, HTML, More Plugins. HTML gadgets, RSS feed, and now I'm going to paste in that address I just got from that site in Firefox. I'm going to go next, and I'm going to insert the plugin. There you go. It works. So the difference in Firefox is that we don't have that nice little icon up here at the top that, you know, goes orange to tell you that it's there. What you have to do is you go to the page that you suspect <laughs> it's an RSS. And as I said, most of them are now. And you go to bookmarks, come down to where the RSS feed is, and then this is your address that you can then copy and use. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Christina, did I answer you?
was I able to show it to you in Firefox? I assume that's what you're trying to do right now, is do it yourself. Okay. Boop at me if it doesn't work. So let's go now and look at some of these others. Uh, here's a link that says Top 100 te Teacher Technology Blogs. Again, so if I click on the links that are here, and it takes me to the site, if I'm in Chrome and I put the extension in, and I click on it, it gives me two different links here. Now, if I want to see the EdTech Central plus the comments that people put in, I can pick the second one. Same trick, right click, copy the link address, pop in here, get myself a space, insert, more plugins, HTML gadgets, RSS feed, paste, next, shows me that it's all working, insert. Now, I really don't want that. That's kind of like, why would I want to see all the comments? Give me the original stuff. And so I'm back, and I'll go ahead and click on it. I'll get the control feed. In other words, this is all the content. And I'll use that. So that's one way. Let's see. Let's look at podcasts now. So these are podcasts that have to do with education. Design Focus High School Builds Tech Talent in Indianapolis. Hey, there's Michael Fullen. Michael Fullen sees global momentum to deep learning. Uh, for those of you in JCPS, and Kim especially, I find it very amusing. I was talking to someone who is a part of the whole deep learning cabal that has taken over Jefferson County Public Schools. And I mentioned Dr. Fullen. And I said, you do know that one of the leading experts in uh, education change knowledge, his term, um, is Michael Fullen. And he has a very good book. I wasn't talking about the Stratosphere book. I was talking about uh, other, Mike's got a whole bunch of books out there. And they kind of looked at me funny and said, I've never heard of Michael Fullen, rather dissensively. And I said, have you ever heard of Phil Schlechty, who actually lives here in Lowell? Again, another strong advocate for the deeper learning concept. No, who is that? So I kind of look at all that stuff that they're doing, and I'm going, okay, so you all have found something that somebody has done, which is basically they've taken stuff from these other thinkers, and they're passing it off as something unique. Now, when you do this page, notice it's not coming in right away. Don't worry. Let it finish. So I'm going to come up here to the Getting Smart. I'm going to copy the link address. I'm going to pop over here. Now, this is a podcast. This is different from, you know, the blog that, we were, that we've done already. These two little gadgets. RSS feed, paste, I'm going to tell it five, next, there it is. Now, this time when we go out and save this, this is the only complaint that I have about, um, oh, it didn't show up. That's interesting. This is the only complaint I have about the PB Works that I think uh, the good folks at Wikispaces did right. And that is in how they would show their RSS feeds that had media content.
in wiki spaces what they would do is they would literally have the button here that you could then press and you could actually hear the podcast you could hear them talking or if it were a video podcast you could see it they don't do that here instead you have to click on the link and then it will take you to where it lives and you can click on the link here if there is a video or an audio link. Well, maybe that's the point. There is an audio link. All right, let's try it again. And let's find one that actually does have an audio link. Boy, I'm sure it's taking a while for that page to low end. Okay. I was getting smart. Um, you weren't what I was looking for. Let's try a podcast to follow. And if it comes up with that again, we'll just skip past it and go to another one. Yeah. So this is this is a whole series of things. Okay, fine. Let me go find one that I know. Let's try this 50 educational podcast you should follow. Yeah, here we go. We know that NPR is an audio format and we know that TED Talks are a video format. So let's go ahead and go to TED Talks. <clears throat> By the way, the history of the world in 100 objects. I actually subscribe to this. It's really cool. Let's go to TED Talks. Oh. Looky, looky. So now we've got all kinds of things here. Let's go look and see if we can find a feed for that. I was afraid of this. So when you look at this one, what do you see? First of all, you're seeing that what we're seeing is the iTunes site for this podcast. And when you see that, what it basically means is <clears throat> this really isn't here. This is just a link that would take you to the site um, inside of iTunes. Now, if you go into iTunes and subscribe to these things, it's just as simple as going to the iTunes TED Talks Education. Right click, copy the feed, and you can put it in. But from this location, we're not going to be able to do that because it's telling me right now that it has a, it's really in iTunes. So let me jump back. Try this one. Episodes to download, and as you can see, it's got a little icon up here that tells you that it is a also. <laughs> It is a site that you have to basically, it's all encompassed in here and it's not using a feed on this page. It uses a different kind of feed. But let's see what happens if I click on solar powered lamp and charger. And now I go up here and click on my link. Now, so see this is, this is, going somewhere else besides this particular site to get its RSS feed. This is what I mean about this is very easy to do, but at the same time it can be very frustrating because you don't know um, if things are actually available to you as RSS feeds until you go and look. And if you want to say, well, Steve, why don't you do this before? Um, good question. So all of these podcasts look like they don't want to give up their feeds. I'm reading down here where they've got the URL. And it looks like... Um, no, that's an URL to actually join a, a, a WebEx session. So I'm kind of striking out here, aren't I, guys? 
Let's go to top 20 teacher blogs. Top 13, excuse me. Best for hands-on activities. Ms. Cassidy's classroom blog. Yay. And she basically is saying that she's maybe not uh, doing it anymore. So as you can see, a lot of these sites that have the media loaded into them, unless the originating site is a RSS enabled feed, it's not going to bring it to you, which is a shame. start closing out my tabs and I'm going to jump back in here. Christina, did you get it to work? And Alex and okay, Alex and Kim, I assume you're using Chrome or are you using Firefox? Please don't use Internet Explorer. I guess I should show Internet Explorer, shouldn't I? Okay, Kim, you're a Chrome person, aren't you? Or are you Safari? Okay. So that's it, guys. <laughs> Once again, it seems like we keep getting shorter and shorter as the week goes along, but it's mainly because these tools are so simple to use that the struggle, and that's what Christine is doing right now, the struggle is trying to find one of these that you can use. Now, there's nothing that prevents you from doing a little research on your own. So you do a googly search well look at that there's one here called uh, ed chat radio personal learning network school leadership teacher leadership how about that let's go look at that real fast and see if we can get this to work these seven podcasts are the best, blah, blah, blah. Here's Ed Chat Radio. Let's go click to it. Yeah, that's fine. Remember what we're looking for. If we see that it is hosted in an iTunes, it'll come up here at the top. Now, don't let this scare you over here. Let's see if my RSS feed works here. Yay! So I have finally found a podcast where I can actually get it. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on that RSS, copy the link address. I can't believe I closed out my PB works. And try putting this in here and let's see how it comes up. So edit, I'm going to put it below that one, insert, more plugins, HTML gadgets, RSS feed, paste in the feed address, show the feed title, 10, 5, that part doesn't matter. Look what it's doing. Remember I told you, if it says it's loading, there might be a problem. Let's go ahead and hit the insert plugin 
And then let's go ahead and save it. And let's see what happens to it. It didn't come in. Again, I'm sorry. This is the hit or miss nature of this when you're dealing with this RSS ability. Um, mainly because what's happened is the podcasting world has kind of been taken over by these guys. So iTunes, Stitcher, Play Music, um, tuned in. So it may be that we're not able to anymore get... Good for you. You found one. Let's go look at it. How far do I have to go down to get into it, Alex? <laughs> Click on the podcast option and then you can grab it. Good. All right. So some, some of these have the podcast feed embedded in their site and others are taking us somewhere else, Techlandia Podcast. Got it. Now, does it bring in anything except, let's go look at that. You know what's interesting? Look at that. The one above it, there's the RSS. So I'm not sure if that's a, if that's an issue with, um, TV works that it doesn't understand how to bring in media. Do a little research on that. Oh, yeah. Now that one came in real nice. You click on the link and it takes you back to the page where the play button is. Okay. I can live with that. As I said, in Wikispaces, it would actually have the, the play button right here next to each one of the episodes. Let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow is normally five. All you have to have, Christina, is five. And then sort of a summation paragraph underneath it all saying these are the ones I picked. Um, and then you're going to read the articles. Let me go back and show you the assignment. So what we're doing here is we are looking for five RSS feeds. And hopefully they have something that, you know, is something that you're interested in. Five links. Uh, don't worry about two to four paragraphs. We've talked about this. Uh, one paragraph, well written, explaining to me why you picked the ones you picked. And then you have the articles presentations. Again, if you want to make that a separate page within your wiki to respond to these one, two, three, four. Very short, extremely short. Uh, just sort of response to the whole RSS phenomenon and how you might see it working in your classroom. The other thing we've talked about in this particular module is, again, this is not an assignment. This is just for your information. This is the information about if you are interested in doing a podcast using an online app called Soundation. Uh, and here is how you'd create a podcast in 11 steps. This is a tutorial to show you how to use Soundation. And then here is the link that takes you to Soundation. And here are the various free uh, sound effects and music links that you can use to make your podcast come alive. But that's not a part of the assignment. That's just a, hey, if you want to give this a whirl, I have a paid account on Podomatic. So if you're interested in developing something, I have done this for the last 20 years with kids all over the state of Kentucky. Um, it's fascinating to see what kids come up with. And some of their podcasts are just stunning how technically proficient and 
I tell you the best one that I have found lately here uh, is four young women from the near uh, near east. Uh, excuse me. Who are? Let's see. I want to get this right. One is Syrian, two are Jordanian, and one is Iraqi. And they are some of the most just beautiful young women I've had the honor of knowing. And their podcast is all about growing up Muslim as a female. Good stuff. Um, the name of their podcast is The Scarf. And we are so stupid, dumb in Western culture to that whole culture. So the scarf is a very um, contentious issue, I guess you would say. When young Muslim girls uh, go into adolescence, um, they sort of rebel about wanting to have to wear the scarf. It's good stuff. It's really well done. Let's talk about tomorrow. So tomorrow's the last day of class. And on that last class, what we're going to look at is probably one of my favorite things of all the issues that we've talked about this week, and that is Pinterest. Uh, I have a Pinterest account that is very, very, I've let my Twitter account just kind of go over the years. I don't really go to Twitter all that much because mainly I get angry when I read the stuff that's on Twitter. But I have a very, very vibrant uh, Pinterest account. I get people who subscribe to it almost daily. And I think the thing that I love about Pinterest that I don't like about uh, Twitter is how easy it is to curate, to collect resources that are really, really valuable and really, really deep in what you can do. Um, if you've never gone to Pinterest, you, you really need to take a look at it. And my Pinterest account is loaded with all kinds of different boards. I have boards in there that have to do with woodworking, because I like to do that, uh, that have to do with um, this, creating content. And I, I have other things in there, bariatric cooking, because I'm a bariatric patient. I went through a... Uh, a bariatric sleeve procedure in December. I'm down now about 50 pounds and uh, uh, I'm building muscle back and getting very fit, very trim. Uh, but when you go through that procedure, you have to totally change the way you eat and what you eat. And so I have a Pinterest board for that. Uh, I have Pinterest boards for just about you name it. So what we're going to do is look at how to set one of those up, how to create a board, and then how to create the widget. You're seeing a, a pattern here, I think. How you create a widget that you then can put into your wiki. Now, in Pinterest, the way it works is you can have a very diverse Pinterest account, and but you can create a widget just about a certain board. In other words, about a certain thing that you would like to share. And that's what makes it, again, one of my favorites to do because I can have this very diverse Pinterest account, but I don't have to share everything in the Pinterest account with you. Also, we'll take a look at this, but if you'll remember on Monday, I told you that um, this is extremely straightforward in the live text. It has just one assignment in the live text, and that is the completion of the hat. And in the hat, all you're doing is you're putting in the address of your wiki, and then you're answering um, the prompts at the bottom. Excuse me while I look in all the million and one live texts that I have. So this one is pretty much, give me a link to your wiki and then respond to the prompts down here. 
describe the process and the development of your PLN. In other words, what, what did you go through? How did you find things? What was frustrating? Uh, what was easy? What do you see uh, valuable? How will you implement your PLN so it becomes a habit of learning and exploring? Remember, we talked about this in the opening one and only PowerPoint I gave you, uh, which is there's little stages you pass through creating a PLN. We're kind of at a lurker stage, but when we finish this wiki, you will actually have something you can go back and share with colleagues. But the point would be, will you revisit your Twitter account and add more information? which, as we also pointed out to you, feeds over to your wiki. Isn't that cool? Pinterest, same thing, feeds over to your wiki. Now, the RSS, the way it would work is you would come in, and if I add an episode, because I have the feed there on my screen, since I have just, say, five or ten, the new episode will push out the Otis and add itself in as the new episode. That's why you get all the... That's why it allows you to have all those different numbers. Um, but that's how that one would work. So you're going to think about how you might want to use this back at school. And then what new questions and area of inquiry has your PLN opened up to you? Keep these very short. Uh, no more than a paragraph, please. And that's it. That is your final. I'm going to pop back over into here. I'll take any final questions you might have. And good Lord Almighty, look how fast we got out of here today. Don't close that one, Steve. In summary, the RSS feed has dramatically changed over the years. It's gone to, from being a very uh, interactive new thing on the web to where it is today, which is it's still being used. Uh, most things that are created for the web now have RSS built into them, but to Christina's point, most people are using the ability to subscribe and to receive notifications from uh, iTunes channels now. And I'll tell you, one of the things that I looked for last night in preparing for class today is I did visit uh, YouTube. And unfortunately, the YouTube channels do not have RSS feeds attached to them. The notification is the RSS feed, but you can't get in behind the YouTube wall to see that RSS feed. Isn't that interesting? Could you use a channel as one of your entries here? Sure could. I don't see a reason why you can't. That is as much a resource as anything else. And when you subscribe to a channel in YouTube, as you well know, um, you'll receive notifications if you hit the bell when a new one pops up. The problem with using YouTube, let's go look at it real fast. The problem with using YouTube is it is a very much closed environment, as you well know. So here I am. This is my YouTube. If you ever wonder where all this stuff lives that I put out there, here it is. It lives on this little YouTube channel that I have created. So if we go in and do a search for using iPads in classrooms, you can get this kind of stuff. Notice, though, that most of these are one-offs. Let's go ahead and let's pop one here. 
Now this guy's got a channel. iPads can be a great tool for teachers and students alike in the classroom. Oh my God, that voice. Um, so he's got a channel. There it is. He doesn't have a bell. What does that tell you? Let's see if we can find a way to get to a site that he might have. There's his bell. And then we've got a whole bunch of other associated sites that have popped up. Okay. Bang. Now, how do you put this in to your wiki? Go up here, and you're going to highlight the address. And you're going to copy it. You're going to come into here, and I'm going to edit. This time, though, I'm going to insert video YouTube. Next. Insert the plugin. So I now have this guy's video channel in my. Uh, Wiki. And since I've subscribed to his channel and I've turned notification on, I will get those notifications. It's RSS done the YouTube way. So if you want to do that as well in here, so you can get some media in yours. iPads can be a great tool for teachers and students. That'd be fine with me. Will that video change? That's a good question, my friend. Um, I think what it will do is, since you have notifications turned on, it will give you the notifications. I don't know, to be honest with you. I haven't played with this in this particular venue to know if it will. Um, the fact that what I did before I got that Earl, you noticed I actually went in and I went subscribe click the bell, and then when I go in here, I'm going to select the URL up there, and hopefully what it does then is it follows me. It will follow me, and when I put it on my page, it's going to let me know those things. I don't know that for sure, though. But I do know that the notification is a um, subset of the RSS feed. So give it a try. See if it works. Now, the problem with that is uh, who knows how many times that guy <laughs> updates it. That's the, you know, that's the problem. You can see I'm subscribed to this guy. Good this title. video is for Austin at the Boys and Girls Club in Florida, but I figured this could be something that's useful for everyone. These are a quick thought. This guy is, is a good one. As you can see, I am subscribed to him. Um, I like him. And I've never put him into a wiki. So I'm going to do that right now because he does upload stuff. And as you saw, I was subscribed to him. I had notification turned on. So I'm going to go ahead and drop him in. And then hopefully when he does update it, I will show it to you. And I'll let you all know. So there we go. I've got these two in here. The beauty of this is whether they update or not. And this, I can't stress this enough with a wiki. First of all, one of the things that in other classes, when we talk about using wikis, one of the things that we talk about is how you are driving content to your students. 
as opposed to students just going to YouTube and wandering all over the place. And one of the tools that I demonstrate to everyone is a website called ViewPure. And what ViewPure does is it strips out all the, they call it clutter, I call it crap, that is in most YouTube channels. Now, you know what I'm talking about, the ads um, and the recommendations. And so if I put it into this viewpure.com and I put in the address and I purify it, now what I have is a very clean video that I don't have to worry about the junk. Okay? Kind of a little nice little tool to put in your arsenal. It really does help with controlling the content. Because look, even though I'm I'm in here and I get to the end of his little presentation. As you can see, he's got some recommendations that come up, but he has he is a good YouTuber because what he's done is he's got his managed so the only place that it's gonna send you to is to his stuff. Um, when I teach about how to build a YouTube channel for your use in a school, this is one of the things I teach you, is how to build your channel so at the end of your episodes, kids don't have the ability to see junk or inappropriate stuff for that matter. Okay, I'm done for the day. I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning things up and letting you all ask me any questions. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow morning. We will play in the land of Pinterest, my favorite, and I'll show you how easy it is to build a Pinterest site. And to uh, finish up, so when is all this due? When is this due? The way the registrar's office works is it is due 48 hours after the last class. Well, tomorrow is the last class. But the 48 hours that occurs is a weekend. So you have 48 hours after that. So in other words, next Tuesday. So I'll be looking in to the uh, live tech starting off, start over the weekend just to see. Uh, but uh, next Tuesday, you'll need to get it into live text. If you're having problems, um, if you need to have an extension, uh, you know, life happens, just let me know. Just let me know. That's all you have to do. Okay. Well, I'm going to call it quit for the day. I'll get this uh, movie up this afternoon. Thanks, you all. I hope you're enjoying this wonderful little class.